Welcome everybody. This is our experiential education panel for GAN Academy. Since we can't do revisit days in person, we're doing them virtually. I am recording this session. So if for some reason um, you have to hop out or um, you miss a piece, you can go back and see it, see it on our accepted students uh, landing page. This is really all about experiential ed at GAN. Um, we have an amazing program run by Shawnee Witten, who is here and some uh, amazing GAN students. So I'm gonna throw it over to her and let her introduce them and introduce herself. And so you can hear directly from her. Just a couple of um, quick Zoom things. We usually ask people to mute themselves on Zoom just cause sometimes they're background noise, um, families talking, dogs barking. And if you have a question, don't be shy, reach out. You can either wave and we will see you. You can put it in the chat on the side. You can put it privately to me. You can um, put it to everybody, but we wanna make sure we get your questions answered. So with that, I wanna welcome you all and turn it over to Shawnee. Great. Um, I'm Shawnee Winton. I'm the Director of Experiential Education at GAN. Um, and I will be introducing, we have two seniors on this, on this chat room, this, this panel, and two juniors. Um, Eamon Sinclair is a senior, and Lizzie Schnurr is also a senior. David Cotton and Kira Epstein are our juniors. Um, and we're going to be talking about three programs that we have at GAN. Um, they are signature programs for each of the each of the grades, ninth and 11th grade, uh, participate in Exploration Week. And we'll, I'll explain that in a little bit. 10th grade participates in the My Israel Travel Course. And 12th grade uh, participates in Ma'avar, which is our senior capstone project. Um, I'm gonna start with My Israel. And then we will go on to Exploration Week and then finally to Ma'avar. Um, and if you have any questions, please um, please let me know, and I'll, I'll be asking our um, our students as well. To you can jump in at any time. Um, so my Israel is a is our is our program that our tenth graders participate in. It is a six week program in the tenth grade. They've left after. Passover, and they come back after the Jewish holiday of Shavuot, um, which is a six-week span. Um, they are in Israel for Israel's Independence Day and Israel's Memorial Day, and, um, and then continue for the rest of the time there. They spend about a week in the north, a week in the south, 10 days in Jerusalem, about a week in Tel Aviv area. And then we spend two weeks with our sister school in, in Haifa, one week which we do homestays with them and one week where we do hiking. This year, we were gonna do a sea to sea hike that um, was a four and a half day hike that um, we would sleep outside and and be with them that way. For the students that are on the panel, they spent a week in the desert in the Negev with the with the Israelis as well. So um, my Israel is not just a trip; it is really part of our four-year Israel education curriculum. Um, and our Israel education curriculum is based on this model of the goal is to, over the four years that they're again, they will come out with a vibrant living relationship with Israel that is constantly changing, that they are constantly thinking and um, engaged with. And the way that this happens is that through knowledge, connection, um, so knowledge about Israel and its people and its and its culture and connection to the land to to the people in Israel that they this will create a a way that they could come up with opinions for themselves on Israel on the big questions the Palestinian Israeli conflict or the American American Israel relationship and that that 
once they have this connection, once they have the knowledge, they will also then, you know, form these opinions, and each one will then, like, go to the next. So Shani, I'm gonna, Shani, I'm gonna share a screen so everybody can kind of get a visual of what you're, of what you're, uh, what you're talking about, right? Perfect. Now. So just give me one second. So, if you have knowledge, that makes you want to be connected. If you have connection, it makes you want to learn more. If you want, if you, once you have an opinion on something, you want to then know and be connected in a, in a different way. So this is what we're talking about in terms of this vibrant living relationship. And this is very much what we, our goals for Israel education over the four years that they're again. And the Israel, the My Israel trip is really a, um, a product of, of this. This is where the kids are getting the most connection and, and a lot of the knowledge piece. Um, the other goals, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna hear from the students, the other goals of the trip are um, personal growth and class bonding. These are both very important. Um, class bonding, they have already been again for a, a year and a half, and now they are going to, they are going to be in Israel together for six weeks. They form different relationships. They connect with each other in different ways. They go through a lot with each other, and they come back with a much deeper appreciation for each other and for their the class. And that brings them forward in a much stronger place for the next year and a half that they will be, or two years actually, that they will be in school. Personal growth, this is a time of real growth. It's emotional growth um, and it's intellectual growth. Um, they, they, even kids who have been on camp trips before, they just learn so much about themselves um, being away from home with their school friends. Um, being able to navigate the issues and talking about different, different, um, different things and really going through a lot together. So these are our my Israel course goals. Um, so that's sort of my Israel in a nutshell. Um, and I was wondering from our students if you could touch upon, let's say, um, give them maybe a, a meaningful experience that you had on, on the My Israel trip. So who would like to go first? Amen. Uh, so probably my most, like my most meaningful experience on the trip would probably be uh, the two day experience of Yom Azikran to Yom Azmir, which is the, is the Memorial Day in Israel uh, of fallen soldiers uh, to Independence Day. Uh, and it was really, amazing like unique experience for me to be able to be there for that because it goes from one day on the memorial day of true sadness and every single person in israel is sad and there are silence and mom moments of silence of the entire country uh and we and we felt that uh for 24 hours and then as soon as the sun went down the entire country was partying and it was amazing and we went to we went to a, a really famous concert uh, a really famous a really famous artist in the concert and there were thousands of people there and we kind of felt immersed in the Israeli culture. Uh, and I'd always heard about this like, shift and this turnover between those two days, but it was, it was really amazing for me to, to be able to experience that. Who else would like to share? Lizzie? You can go. Um, so for me, I'm not, a, like, I'm not super into prayer at home. I'm from a conservative family, but we don't, like we go to temple, but it's not a regular thing for me and I don't get a lot of meaning out of it. But when we were in Svat, which is a very religious city, um, we were given options of different temples that we could go to for Shabbat. And all the options were Orthodox shuls because there was, there's no conservative or reform shuls there. Um, and so I chose one kind of at random and I didn't really know what to expect. And it wound up being like a very, very deeply meaningful service. We were all dancing, all singing. We were out on this like rooftop and you could just see the whole city. And it was like a very meaningful experience that I had never expected that I would have in a prayer, in an Orthodox prayer, especially. Kira? Um, I think for me, my most meaningful experience in Israel was during Shavuot. And for us, it was, 
towards the end of the trip, it was probably the last two days, the last few days of the trip. And it was just amazing to walk and learn all night. And it was something that I had never experienced before or never thought I'd be doing, especially in Israel and being able to learn and talk with new people and going to the Western Wall in the middle of the night was something that I would always remember and being able to reflect on the past six weeks as a whole. Okay. Thanks. Um, so like Lizzie, I also had a really cool experience in spot. There was, um, there was an option to go to this, uh, this Hasidic shul of very religious people. And it was, I remember going to it and I definitely had a lot of expectations. Like it'll be some place with, you know, men in their hats and their black robes who wouldn't be all that friendly and would sing all this stuff we wouldn't know in an accent we couldn't understand. But then we get there, it's probably, I, I'm in my living room now, it was probably smaller than my living room, a really small shell. And the guy, when we got there, a bunch of the people praying there just lit up and welcomed us in. And like, we expected to not know the tunes and to kind of just be spectators, but we ended up knowing all of the tunes they were singing and they would grab us and get us up to dance. And we would, and we just danced in a circle with these guys who were smiling and really happy to have us. And we couldn't really communicate, but we were all singing the same songs at the top of our lungs and dancing around in circles, which was really nice. Um, somebody just uh, wrote if the Israel trip will be rescheduled, rescheduled for next year. So this year's trip. Um, so we are, we are going to be taking this 10th grade sometime within the next two years. We don't know for sure yet if it will be next year, but we will, um, but we will be taking them. We've committed to taking them to Israel sometime within the next two years. So we actually, to be honest, we really just have not had a chance yet to um, come up with a, a plan since this all happened so quickly. So um, if, could you also tell me um, something that you learned on the trip that um, you couldn't have learned in the classroom, that you learned because you were in Israel? Amen. Uh, so I learned what, you, what you're talking about in the PowerPoint a little bit about the growth and the knowledge. Uh, it, it was something that was really amazing for me, but also kind of really frustrated me, but in a good way. Uh, where I've always I've learned about Israel and I've learned I've learned about the history of Israel, uh, and I kind of developed a stance from that from from Boston. But then when I got there, I kind of I fell in love with the land, and I fell in love with the stories, and I fell in love with everything that was going on there and the culture there, and it gave me a totally unique perspective, and it totally changed my stance, uh, and it it gave me so many new questions that I wouldn't have been able to have had I just stayed in the classroom. Uh, uh, Did you give an example of what? Can you give an example of what kind of questions those are? Um, uh, what, wait, can you, can you say that one more time? Just you said it could change, like change some of your, the way that you were thinking, like what kinds of things were you thinking that changed while you were there? So before the trip, I was much, I was kind of much more op open, like uh, looking forward for peace and more willing to part ways with a lot of the land in Israel politically. But then when I kind of fell in love with the land, I, I kind of understood more of the other perspective. Uh, and I kind of felt the connection in my heart. Like, oh, maybe, maybe that's not the way. I, I really love this land. I, I feel the Jewishness in this land. I feel, I feel like this is the Jewish homeland. And I don't think I could have been able to feel that had I, had I been in Boston. And that's, that's something I'll always remember. Libby? Yeah, I think that's really on that political end, um, yeah, I had learned a lot about the conflict and I definitely had a lot of opinions going into the trip. Um, but we heard from speakers from all different walks of life, like everywhere on the spectrum in on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And so like, it's easy to brush it off and brush off one side or the other, but when you're listening to people whose lives are affected every day by different aspects of the conflict, like, for example, we met with a girl our age who was living in the West Bank and, like, commuted to school in Israel. 
Um, and like hearing her story just made it a lot harder to like brush different sides off because when you're looking someone in the eyes and they're telling you about their life, like it's impossible not to empathize with them. David? One thing that I got to see in Israel that I wouldn't have been able to learn about back home is really just how just how important Jewish pluralism is because obviously at GAN we see Jews from many, many different walks of life and it's a pluralistic school and we were always taught the value of Jewish pluralism, how important it is for all of us to come together. And we, I definitely learned about it and had definitely heard it, but the, the only time where, where like I really got to see it and really got to feel it and got to see how easy it is to just connect with any sort of Jew, regardless of level of practice or where they're from was in that Shillin spot where I saw these guys who spoke no English and could only speak Hebrew with us and were from such a different part of life. And we never would have, we never would have come across had we not decided like, let's throw ourselves into this situation. Let's go to this show where we don't really, uh, where we don't really fit in with people who, who don't speak our language and all that. And then we go there and all of a sudden, oh, okay, this is home. These are all the songs we've sung forever and we fit right in and they accept us like going like halfway around the world and being like brought into the show with open arms. Like that's something that just could not be appreciated in the same way in Boston. Kira. Um, something that's kind of adding on to what David said was, I think just going to Israel and being able to learn about like Judaism and what it means to be Jewish and finding your Jewish identity was something that I was able to learn by actually having to go there and not being here in Boston, especially because I don't come from a very religious family and being like the only kid in, a, in my family who goes to a Jewish day school and sending them to Israel and getting this whole new sense of like being able to connect myself to my religion finally and being able to find that in Israel is not something I was able to find here, which is cool. Okay, we'll do, yep. When um, Johnny, I've, got, I've got a question in the chat about, because um, this panel is an experiential education panel. So Israel is great. We can keep talking about that for sure. But some questions about other experiences again. So um, we have Explo Week. Yes. So I'm wondering if some kids can talk about that and how all of these experiences together give them the, the guidance and the, and the direction to, for their senior capstone project. So they have the skills to be able to do that. So it's kind of two separate questions, but addressing some of those. So let me just tell you, say like specifically what Exploration Week is and so in case somebody doesn't know, in ninth and 11th grade, our students spend a week um, outside of the classroom um, doing, going on, we call them trips. Some of them are local trips. Some of them are travel trips. Um, they, uh, they take the students out of the classroom. Sometimes they delve deeper into some learning in that they've been doing. Um, sometimes they're giving new skills. Um, they do con intensive community service. And sometimes it's, it's just doing something out of their comfort zone. Um, and in all of it, they create, develop community with their exploration week. Um, just quickly, if you go into the next slide, just you can see the travel trips that we would have had this year. Um, and some of them we do, do each year and this, many of them are, are new. Um, so if students just want to talk about like what they've done in the past, if so some of you have like the 10th, the 11th graders, you've done this in, um, in ninth grade and the 12th graders have done it in ninth and 11th. So if you could talk about what you've done, what you've learned on, on these programs, what was unique about them, um, just so everybody knows, these programs are created by our, our faculty. Some, a, a teacher or a staff person has an idea and they create a program from this idea. And actually I'm gonna shoot Eamon because Eamon and a friend of his had an idea for a, a program last year and they worked with two staff members to create the Expo Week program. So maybe Eamon, you can start. Yeah, so I, had, I remember I was talking to my friend and my friend and I both 
we love baseball and we were talking about something and neither of us really knew the answer. We were like, oh, I wish there was a classic game about this. Uh, and then we were saying, oh, maybe, like imagine there was an exploration week, how much fun that would be. And then we talked with Shawnee about it and Shawnee under, like, understood the question and then took it seriously. And we were both like, oh my gosh, maybe this is a possibility. Uh, this would be the coolest thing ever. So then after a couple of meetings with teachers and, and figuring out the plan, for a week, we, we learned about what we call like the life of the minor league baseball. So we went to different stadiums around New England. We met with really cool people, the, the president of the, of the Paw Sox, one of the Red Sox uh, affiliate teams. Uh, and that was amazing to listen to their story. We met with professors of baseball at BU, which was incredible. I didn't really know that existed and I love baseball. And so that was a really cool experience for me. Uh, and, and it was just, it was really cool for me to be able to have this idea in my, uh, in my head with my friend and then to, to be experience it for a week and I experienced it with 20 other kids from Gann. It, it was really amazing. And Lizzie, you did the civil rights trip last year, correct? Do you want to just talk about that a little bit and what you learned and like, Okay, so um, last year I was able to go, I believe the, like it was called the Civil Rights Journey, it's the formal name, um, and so a group of us flew down to <clears throat> Alabama and Georgia to like really do like a deep dive experiential week of learning about civil rights and the history in America of African Americans, um, and especially for me, I was taking U.S. history last year. So it was really, really cool to see a lot of what we had been learning about all year, like in reality, like we went to Selma and we met a woman who marched in Selma when she was a kid and like to hear her story and like to see that part of our history be alive was really cool. And that was definitely an experience and a trip that I probably would never have done by myself. Um, and I wouldn't have had the resources to meet the people that I did by my, if I had done it by myself. Um, so it was really awesome to do that and to see it in that light in the, our history and the, a really dark part of U.S. history. But to see like what has come out of that dark part was really amazing. That's great. Um, Kira and, and David, um, in ninth grade, what what did you do and like what did you what did you learn from it? Um, in my ninth grade Explo week, I did a community service trip just to local places. Like we spent the whole week going to a new place every day, whether it was like a, a home for people, like a shelter for people, or it was an elderly home. And I just I, I learned that it was just really important to give back. It was hard it was something I wanted to do I wanted to get involved but it's hard to find that time during the school year and I was grateful that GAN offered a whole week where I could do that and have so many opportunities to go to so many different places and it was nice to just see the smile on people's faces we went to a, a women's shelter and we cooked meals for them we cooked lunch for them twice a week and it was just awesome seeing like the smile on their faces and seeing them connect with students because obviously like that doesn't happen every day and it just really makes their day just doing something nice for them which is really really and what were you going to do this year i was supposed to do the return to zion trip so that was going to be a hiking trip in um, zion national park and they were going to be studying geography and um, and and astronomy, yeah. Um, while doing pretty intensive hiking, so we're we're crossing our fingers, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> and David, how about you? So my Explo week, my ninth grade year, was urban food forests and permaculture, which was every bit as interesting as it sounds. We started in one um, like small community garden in Boston where they had, um, 
they needed help building a like a full scale clay oven that was like it was like six feet tall and it was a huge project so we spent like two or three days digging the hole to make the foundation and building up and building it up with all these rocks and it was made out entirely out of recycled material and everything and so we did that and then we also helped uh helped create a, a little walkway and another boston uh another Boston community garden, which was also really cool. And it was just a lot of working out in the sun in perfect May, spring weather. And it was really nice to have it at the end of freshman year where I definitely made plenty of connections and made plenty of friends, but not really have, not have like super deep and close friends. But then on Explo week, it was really nice to hang out with people like all day long outside of class and just having fun hauling rocks around and digging a really deep hole. And so it was fun to just connect with them that way. And I really made some of my closest friends freshman year out of that experience. Great, thank you. Um, how do you think these, these programs in, enhance your GAN experience? Like what, what is it about them that like speaks to you about GAN? David. Um, for me, the probably the most the ganniest thing that came out of this was um, definitely my connection with two teachers. Uh, the two teachers that led it were Mr. Freeze, who was an English teacher but has since left GAN, and then Mr. Daniels, uh, the music teacher. And that it was really nice to just to hang out with them outside of class. And Mr. Daniels had actually grown up on a farm when he was younger, and I got to hear all of his favorite stories about like his childhood and what he did. And Mr. Freeze is someone who really studies botany and knows like every single type of tree in North America. And like, it was really awesome to get to know the quirks and interests of my teachers and just like to be able to have a normal, casual conversation with them that was about like about something other than like a homework or assignment or a quiz and just talk to them about like their interests and really helped form a great connection that also improves the learning at school. Yeah, Lizzie. Um, yeah, to add on to that, definitely connections with teachers. My teacher, the main teacher that led the civil rights trip was Mr. Cadden, who was my history teacher last year. And he, like, I loved him all year, but that trip definitely did a lot for our bond. He ended up writing my college recommendation letter and I asked him to do it on that trip because that was when I felt like that was the teacher that probably understood me as a person and a student best. Um, and also just the connections with your the other students on the trip with you. Um, I know that on the trip last year there I had a few of my good friends, but a lot of the people on the trip weren't people that I spent a lot of time with outside of school. Um, but to have an experience like that, that is really emotional and really deep and meaningful going through doing a trip like that with people, no matter how close you are with them to begin with like no matter what it's a bond um and I definitely felt a lot closer to all of those people after the trip regardless of how much I saw them. Kira. Adding on to what Lizzie just said um I think the bonds that I made with my classmates and friends and knowing that that's something that you're that's only between you guys that's something that only you guys can have with each other is the memories you make on these trips and the bonds and what you go through together and now it it changes everything for like the rest of your high school experience and you can look at them in the halls and know that you have something special with that person all because of these trips and it's really nice amen uh for me it was can helping me find my passion uh I had always, so staying with the with the baseball trip that I that I did uh, last year, I had always loved baseball, but I never really thought of it as more than a game or a sport. Uh, but this idea and this trip helped me make it a passion and something, and and helped me realize that it's something possibly I'd want to pursue uh, for a long time. And I'm I'm someone who can sit in front of the computer and will just look up statistics and different things about baseball, but then Gan helping me with all these resources and different people and doing all these different experiences 
it, it, it was something I could never do by myself. And it was, it, it was, it was an amazing experience from Dan. And it really helped me kind of focus on, on a passion of mine. So that actually bring us to Mavar. Yes, Emily. I just want to add one quick thing. Um, I was actually lucky enough to chaperone a couple um, exploration week trips. Um, I had the pleasure of taking a couple groups down to New Orleans to do some rebuilding. And um, first of all, like they, you know, GAN is amazing in the sense that they bring staff, faculty, everybody into the community in a way that's really special. So I got a chance to travel with two other faculty members and 16 other students to experience this amazing week down in New Orleans where we, um, you know, worked together, sweated together, um, explored together. And so it was amazing to see the connections that were built um, on this trip. And, um, you know, I came back feeling like I had these incredible connections with some of these students that I really only knew, um, you know, from, um, you know, the admissions process at that. And it was amazing. So, um, you know, it, you know, it just was an incredible experience that everybody at GAN is really brought into, um, you know. And one of the things is that I found, um, I was a parent again before I worked again. And um, Exploration Week was really one of the things that brought, brought us to GAN. And um, what I didn't realize as when I was choosing GAN and hearing about Exploration Week was how amazing the teachers are. These teachers come up with these programs based on their interests, based on their, um, their, their lifelong desire that these are in their classroom, or outside of their classroom, and just want to give this experience to the students and take time, they, you know, with very little compensation to, to create this incredible, incredible experience only because they want the kids to experience this, this, this different and um, exceptional program. And it has made me, by working again, it has now made me appreciate how actually Amazing Exploration Week really is about the school, um, not just for the students, but really appreciating the teachers. Um, so maybe we'll shift to, if there, are there any questions about, about Exploration Week? Should we continue or? Let's move on to senior year and senior capstone okay. project. So that actually, Eamon made a good transition to Mavar because Mavar is our senior um, capstone project. And the students, the 12th graders, finish their regular school year at the beginning of May. And for the month of May, they each work on a month long project. Um, there are three components to the to these projects. Um, there is, I just don't have it up. Um, can you put it up? Yeah, great. Um, the components are risk taking, self discovery and meaning making. So they have will be create a, pro a project with a mentor that will either or have some components of all three of these things that they will be going a little bit out of their comfort zone that trying something new and also taking some of their um, their interests and delving deeper into those um, and really finding meaning in it. What does it mean to them? What does it mean to for others? Where can, where are they going to go with this this project and how is it how are they going to find meaning from it? Um, some of that will be through reflection and some of it will be actually in the doing. The 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 critical component is not what comes out of it, but what they've learned from it. So um, but they in order to come up with a an idea they have to really delve deeply into what are their interests, what are their, um, their, their future plans, or what is something that they've always wanted to learn. And then they find a, a faculty or staff mentor to work with, and then they come up with a, pro, a project. So the reason why it's a good transition from Eamon is because Eamon's project 
actually is pretty closely connected to the Exploration Week that he talked about. So, Eamon, please tell us about your exciting project. Yeah, so I, I had a really cool uh, journey where I, af after that Exploration Week, I kind of, like I said, I, I, I thought maybe for the first time, this is something that I want to pursue. Uh, and I wanted to get my foot in the door in any capacity. Uh, and so, actually, Miss Falchuk right here, uh, she helped me get an interview with the Boston Red Sox uh, for a position on, on day games. Uh, and then I was able to get the job uh, for Mavar and then for, for the summer. And I'm, I'm crossing my finger that, it, that it's going to happen because of the situation right now. The season's on hold. Uh, but it's, it, it'll be an amazing experience. And it, it really does stem for me from that exploration week. Uh, there was kind of something that clicked for me, and, and I'm, I'm incredibly excited for this opportunity and for the start, uh, and I'm, I'm really praying that it happens. It will. And, Eamon, it's really a testament to you and your GAN education that you took those skills, you built upon them, you followed your dream, you had the skills and the support from your community, and you made it happen. So it's a lot of credit to you, but um, it's great that you have the opportunity to do that at GAN. And if you can't do it right now, I know you will get there before you head off to whatever you're doing when you graduate. Thank you. And, and a, a lot of it too is, is from my mentor. Uh, my, my mentor, my mom of our mentor uh, was the same uh, teacher who led the, my exploration week. And since my, he was my teacher in ninth grade and we bonded about uh, the Red Sox because he's a big Red Sox fan. Uh, and when I actually told him that I got the job, I felt a little bit like he was more excited than me. He, <laughs> he, he was incredibly invested in the program uh, and, and he's really excited for me. And it's amazing whenever we talk about it. Awesome. Lizzie, what are you doing for your Mavar? Um, so there's been some changes, but I can share my original plan because it's definitely the more exciting one. So um, my, family, my family and I recently last year became German citizens actually because they, Germany has like a reparations program that if your family was expelled from the country um, during World War II and the years surrounding it, you can just become a citizen. So we did that. Um, so I, following that, have been really interested in my family's history, <clears throat> excuse me, and my grandfather specifically, he was born in Amsterdam and was German and he had, his family had this really crazy, interesting journey. Um, and so I was going to do a deep dive into my family's history, and I was actually planning on going to Germany with my parents to go see where my great-grandparents used to live, because um, in the fall I was in Amsterdam, and I got to see where they lived there, so this was like a continuation of that, um, and I was going to interview my grandfather and my great-aunt and read documents and my whole family is really into ancestry, so I was going to bring it all together and just like find out where I came from and really do the experiential learning of going and seeing it. Awesome. And who is your mentor? And what, oh yeah, so my mentor was Dr. Marshak, who is our grades dean and also a history teacher. And I have him this year for a class called the Origins of Nazi, Nazi Genocide. Um, so I'm very close with him outside of class, but it also, really applied to where I'm in a class about World War II and in Germany. So it made a lot of sense that he would be the person to help me look into my own family's history. That's great. Um, are there any questions about Ma'avar? I got a comment that said, wow, you guys do a lot at GAN. And yes, we do. So yes, we do. kudos to you, Shawnee, and to all of our students who were here tonight and helped our, us participate in this panel. Um, I don't know if there are any other questions or Shawnee, anything else you want to share? If not, uh, I mean, I could keep talking, but I, you know. We, I think we covered a lot in a, in a, in a good amount of time here. Um, I would say that hopefully our students are willing to um, have questions go to them. So if you don't mind, um, no pressure, but if you're comfortable, you can put your email addresses in the chat. We can post that on our accepted students page. Um, we will post this recording along with all of our other uh, virtual re revisit day stuff on that page. So please check it out. We've got more panels tomorrow. 
Um, and we're really very grateful for your time as accepted students. We would love to have you come to GAN. Um, and also very importantly to Shawnee Witten, our amazing, amazing um, faculty rep who, who works so hard to make these programs happen. And to our amazing students, um, Eamon, David, Kira, Lizzie. Did I miss anybody? And uh, to our seniors who I know, this is such a hard time for you all. You're doing a great job. We will get through. We will figure out graduation and capstone projects and everything else. But all of our GAN students are doing great learning online. It's great to see you all on Zoom calls and in classes. And um, we're grateful to you all. So um, if you have questions, Emily, can you post our, um, our landing page? Do you have that? If you do, great. If not, it's, it's all, it's, we're going to send it out again. Um, keep the questions coming. Deadline date is next week. We would love to have you all again next year. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Have thank a good you. Good night. Everybody. Thank you.